The last thing that we're learning in our geometry unit is how to calculate the volume of a rectangular prism. First things first, what is a prism? A prism is a three-dimensional shape that has a base. Not a base like the measurements we've been looking at. It has a base that is a flat surface that it can rest on. In our case, it's going to be a rectangular base. It has two bases that are opposite sides of each other across the shape and are parallel to one another. In sixth grade we will connect them into a rectangle to form a rectangular prism. In seventh and eighth grade you might be looking at other kinds of prisms that have different bases like a trapezoidal prism that has trapezoids for bases but still gets connected in a 3D shape. We're not going to have to worry about those in 6th grade, so let's just focus on our rectangular prism. It looks like a box that you might get from Amazon, or a fish tank, or your cereal box, or the box that your gaming console came in. It is a rectangular, three-dimensional shape, or sometimes it would be a cube, which is a 3D word for like a, a 3D shape. Um, it would be like a dice or like a cube of sugar. It would have equal sides in all three of its dimensions. So that's what a prism is and we're gonna have to calculate the volume of it. The volume, not like the volume of how loud your music is, the volume like how much can fit inside this shape. So if I have a fish tank those of you in my class know that I'm really not good at keeping fish alive. It's just kind of sad. But if I was trying real hard to keep a fish alive in a fish tank, I might need to know how much water to put inside my fish tank. If I want to fill it halfway up, I would only use half of that space. If I wanted to fill it three quarters of the way up, if I wanted to know how much would fit inside the entire fish tank, minus the volume that my little fishy takes up. I need to be able to calculate how much either water or how many cubic inches or feet can fit inside your shape. So let's start with our formula. The formula that you will see on your star chart is V equals capital B H. Now in our area formulas, we dealt with a lowercase b. This one is a capital B, and here's why. Capital B stands for the area of the base. That means when you're looking at a rectangular prism and you have a bottom bit that's sitting on your desk or the your hand or whatever it's resting on this right here is your base so let's say this is two and this is eight and it is four units tall the capital b would be the area of that two by eight base so you'd multiply two times eight to give you 16. your bottom layer right there is 16 units and you have four layers so the bottom layer is 16 units the next layer would be another 16, oh you have 32, the next layer would be another 16, 32 plus 16 is 48, then you have your fourth layer plus another 16 is uh, 64, so this whole thing would be 64 units cubed. There are one, two, three dimensions that you have to multiply together to create this volume. That means that you're multiplying units, times units, three times, hence the exponent of a three. It's also called cubed because three dimensions in units times units times units will make a perfect cube. You don't have to call it cube, but you do have to recognize that sometimes you might see an expression of like, oh, the volume is 64 cubic units. That means units raised to the power of three. Another area formula you might have learned is volume equals length 
times width times height. I write my L like that, a cursive L, because if I write it as a regular L, it kind of looks like 1 times width times height, and I don't want anyone to get confused. This formula will definitely find you your volume. It is not on the star chart, however, so if you're going to use this formula, you need to memorize it because it will not be provided. Here is my rectangular prism. Let's say this is 8, 3, 2. It doesn't actually matter which one I call my length, which one is my width, and which one is my height, because I could turn this on its side and have it stand on this smaller base. It would still have the same volume. Just changing the way it's set up doesn't change the amount of stuff that could fit in it. So it doesn't actually matter which one I assign as length, width, and height. I just know I have to multiply all three numbers together. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 8 is 48 units cubed. Now let's try something else. Here are some problems you might see in the future. Here's a shape. I'm telling you that its height is 9 centimeters. Find me the volume. But wait, Miss Douglas, I don't see any other numbers. How am I supposed to do that? Well, you have a star chart, and your star chart has a centimeters ruler on it. You will be expected at some point during the star to bust those rulers out, either the centimeters or the inches, and start measuring. If I take my ruler and I measure this, how many centimeters is it? I don't actually have a ruler right now, so I'm going to pretend that I measured it. I'm going to say this is 6 centimeters. And then measure in your ruler this side. That looks like 9 centimeters. And then you have to use your own imagination that it's coming 9 centimeters off the page. So you will not be able to really see a picture of this but you can draw yourself one, or you can just recognize that, hey, this is going to be my base, this black rectangle, and I know that the volume is the area of the base, 9 times 6 is 54, times the height. Well, let's see, 54 times 5 times 9 is 45. 4 times 9 is 36. I can only have one digit on each of my place values, so I'm going to bump that 3 on up. 45 plus 3 is 48. I can still only have one digit on each one, so I'm going to leave the 8, bump the 4 up to the next place. Okay, my answer is the volume equals 486 centimeters to the power of 3. Last type of problem you might see is one where I give you the volume and you have to solve for a missing height or length or width. All right, here we go. We are missing this side length right here, but we do know the volume, we do know the height is four centimeters, and this length right here is 21 centimeters. Okay, well, guess what? The base doesn't always have to be the one on the bottom, so long as it could be a flat surface that has another base opposite it. So let's do this right here. This 21 by 4. Well, volume equals the area of a base times the height. We're going to choose this green base. 21 times 4. 1 times 4 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. All right. We know that our volume is 588 and our base is 84 and we're missing our height. 84 and the height are being multiplied together. I'm going to divide by them. Ew, that looks like a really complicated division problem that I'm not so excited to do because I don't know about y'all but I don't memorize my 84's tables. So let me show you a quick way to make this a lot easier. First of all 84 divided by 84 is 1. 
we're left with 1h over here. Now we have 588 divided by 84. Ugh. This fraction bar is a division symbol. Here's the beautiful thing about fractions. You can simplify them. And guess what? When you simplify them, it's still going to give you the same answer in your division problem. So you can simplify both of these numbers by the same factor, and the quotient when you divide them, whether it's simplified or unsimplified, will be the same. So let's start. I see that this number ends in an 8 and this one ends in a 4. Both even numbers. My go-to, why bother trying to find a larger factor? I know that I can divide them both by 2. Let's see. 58 divided by 2. Mm, 2 goes into 5 2 times. 2 goes into 18 9 times. 2 goes into 8 4 times. That's going to give me 42. Oh, check it out. They're both still even. Divide by 2 again. This might take a while to, if you're just going to stick with the divide by 2s. You could try and find a larger factor beforehand, but it's going to work out eventually. Uh, 2 goes into 9 four times. There we go. Oh, now not even anymore. I'm going to struggle to find a simpler scale factor, and I'm just going to erase this and move it over so that I have a little more space. Okay, while I'm thinking, I know 21, it's a number I'm pretty comfortable with. I know that I can make 21 by multiplying 3 and 7. I'm also remembering way back to my divisibility rules that if I find the digital sum of a number, and it is a factor of 3, it's also divisible by 3. So digital sum is when I add 1 plus 4 plus 7. 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 7 is 12. Hey, I can divide 12 divided by 3. That's, that's a factor. Okay, so both of these are going to be divisible by 3. That's going to give me 7. 143, or 47 rather, divided by 3. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, nope, 12. Goes in four times. 27. Oh, I know that's a factor of nine. All right, we got 49 divided by seven. Oh, wait, I know that one. 49 divided by seven is seven. My missing height is seven centimeters right there. Now, last thing you might be asked for is to find the volume, but only find a percentage of the volume. So real quick, let's do that one. I'll make it much easier numbers so that we can stop watching this video and get to some other math practice. Uh, let's say this is a four by three by two inch cube. Not actually a cube, rectangular prism. I know it's not actually a cube because not all three numbers are the same. My volume is the area of the base times the height. Well, there's the base. That 4 by 3 is 12 times the height of 2. The full volume is 24 inches cubed. What if they asked me for 50% of the volume? Well, 50% means half of it. So I would say 50% of the volume is half of 24, which is 12 inches cubed. Just be on the lookout for those kinds of problems. All right, that's it from me.